there were some scientists that, uh, and later on, who came up and stood out very categorically against nuclear weapons. Yeah. Let me give you certain important examples over here. These were people who had also been part of the, the process of trying to understand the atom and how it fissions and all, Niels Bohr hmm? uh, and others. One very important example, of course, was Einstein. What did Einstein say? He said, if I had known that my physics would help to make uh, nuclear weapons, uh, I would have preferred to be a watchmaker. But there was what was called the Federation of Atomic Scientists. Uh, some talked about controlling, securing, but not prepared to go all out to say everybody must get rid of it. So there has been a division among scientists. And if you come to the Indian context, hmm, what's very interesting is that very few scientists in India have any real stature. In fact, Meghnath Saha was one hmm. who, unlike uh, Homi Baba, hmm, didn't want to have anything to do with nuclear weapons. Whereas Homi Baba was putting pressure on Nehru that maybe we should keep the option and not just have uh, a new, uh, a nuclear energy or a nuclear department for atomic energy or peaceful uses, but let's also consider that. So there's a whole history about that over here. Meghnath Saha was one Indian scientist that was very courageous. Mutual assured destruction was, uh, uh, was there in which both sides supposed to have a second strike capability, right? But right. when the United States began to build this defense shield, huh? Then uh, the other side said, well, it's not mutually assured destruction. If they hit us first, they may be able to mop up most of us, we're not left. Hence the uh, uh, escalation, okay. you see? Okay. So now okay. the only difference is that the, in, during the uh, Cold War, there were about 70,000 nuclear weapons. Hmm? Today, they're down to about 20, 25, about 16,000, um, what do you call it, uh, deployed. On, on missiles and others about another 8,000, 4,000, 4,000, 5,000, 5,000 each roughly, which are stored in there. So they can be put on if necessary. In other words, neither the Russians nor the uh, Americans have destroyed their waters. Increasingly now, we have problems that can only be resolved on the global level, but we live in a multiple nation state system in which you have each state pursuing its own national interests in courts and prioritizes that. So let me give you four problems now, which can only be resolved on the global scale. Hmm? One, the question of ecological devastation. Two, the question of nuclearization. Hmm? You will have to have some international elimination of nuclear weapons. Three, the most incredible inequalities of income and, uh, and wealth. Do you know, according to the UNDP, you have 1.5 to 2 billion people who are malnourished or undernourished. I'm not talking about basic needs, like having social security, education. I'm talking about malnourished or undernourishment. When we have enough food in the world, then nobody needs to starve. Hmm? You have enormous inequality of, and you have, if you like, the erosion of democracy or the substantive character of democracy everywhere. One thing let's understand about anti-nuclear movements. Anti-nuclear movements require very substantial involvement of the middle class. You have never had, in spite of Gandhi and Gandhiism being in India, you have never had a large scale anti-nuclear movement in India. Right? The answer is, and in more th third world countries, the answer is very simple in many ways. Right? People are concerned with their everyday livelihood issues. In order for you to think about nuclear weapons and all, you have to have the leisure time, the facility to think about foreign policy, about interconnections on the global scale. And all. People are absorbed in their everyday lives. Now, if there's a small nuclear exchange between India and Pakistan, the whole world because of nuclear winter will be affected. Huh? And yet, what did Einstein say? He said, nuclear weapons have changed everything except the way people think. So the question is, how do you change people's thinking? And how do you generate a mass movement to fight it? Yes, On the question of nuclear weapons, uh, um, uh, uh, don't generalize or universalize uh, responsibility. The crooks, are the nine, the crooks are the nine nuclear weapon states. There are 40 odd nuclear uh, countries. Uh, it's not difficult to make a nuclear bomb. There are 40, 45 countries that can make the nuclear bomb I've decided not to. Let me give you some examples. Hmm? 
one country that needs no lessons from anybody about how to defend their independence is Vietnam. They fought against the most powerful country in the world. 58,000 American soldiers roughly died and two or three to four million Indo-Chinese died in that war. But uh, Vietnam has a 10,000 year history, a thousand year history of enmity with China. India before 1962 has no history of uh, enmity with China, okay? Vietnam has, in 1979, the Chinese conventionally invade Vietnam. The Vietnamese push them out, give them a bloody nose. The Vietnamese can make nuclear weapons. They have decided not to. But the one country in which at least in their parliament, there is, was at least a discussion about them becoming a single state nuclear weapons resort is Bangladesh. Bangladesh is next to what is called the Southeast Asian nuclear weapons free zone, which includes all the countries, including Vietnam, Philippines, and others, which have said that we don't want nuclear weapons. 